Hi again, folks, and uh, hopefully uh, this is getting picked up well. So I said I would be back with, again, a video talking about... Um, you're on YouTube. You've been on the net for a while. You have a computer. You don't know how old your computer is or whatnot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain a little bit better. Well, at least attempt to explain to you better. The computer hardware and technology a little bit more that hopefully you can understand in a you know in a better way because I know not everyone is geeky or tech savvy and so forth so first off uh, let's start off with hard drives now I have a prime example this right here is a hard drive and quite an ancient one this is a Seagate ST3120A and this was around this is an IDE drive um, this technology was mainstream in computers back in the late 1990s so to think this is only 500 megs and this is very similar to what computers have for hard drives nowadays so this is 19 we'll say 1998 1999 is about when these existed they still exist today, except most of them are used for just physical backup storage. So again, technology has gone from back in 1990 to you consider now we're going into 2019, so we're talking about 20 decades. And again, going into time when that is a 500 gig hard drive now it's still relatively small but these are now down around two hundred dollars whereas if you look about two years back this used to be about fifteen hundred dollars which tells you how much more cheaper and more advanced technology has gotten and, and to think physical drives like this that they make nowadays are up to a they have them up to I believe eight terabytes which is about oh you might as well say about 30 of these or 300 of these or so so this into this a whole bunch once you get into the terabyte range of hard drive space you're talking about things that are like DVD movies 4k footage so forth and so forth this drive is only meant to be a little boot drive and it's only meant to basically store a certain amount of storage and uh, for that reason you put your operating system and mainly important programs on it now if you didn't have anything else that you wanted to do online uh, and you didn't want to edit large files in that one of these is perfect let me just ground myself quickly before I grab this because I don't want to uh, shock, give a shock. Uh, again, anytime you're touching a computer component, 
make sure to ground yourself to something metal to make sure that there's no static electricity to send a little volt. So that's basically how big this hard drive is. This is the main hard drive that will go onto that motherboard that I showed you earlier. Very impressive and uh, also at the same time if you don't have big if you have really big fingers could be a little bit of a problem to put it in <laughs> so let's move on from the hard drive or again as I mentioned before this is the Samsung 970 Evo NVMe protocol slash standard M.2 form factor drive. These are also seen online as 228 something spec. This has a five year warranty directly from Samsung. And in my future videos, I will, or in the future video, after this one, showing the comparison of before and after of the systems, you'll actually see the performance numbers of this compared to the SSD that I will uh, put a picture of here. And then the performance of this drive, and you'll see how much of a big difference there is in technology from the past to present. So, moving on from this, close this back up. Next, we're going to go to memory. Now, there's two types of memories for um, when you're talking about computers. This is what is called desktop memory. It has a different pin configuration and layout versus laptop memory which has a smaller profile and a longer length up and down like this. This has this is a little bit more of an advanced um, piece of RAM for your computer because it has individual heat spreaders to keep the RAM cool and when they do get up there in speeds which is as I said this is 3000 megahertz uh, which is converted to 3 gigahertz you're getting to the point that the memory is getting as fast as the processors. So, sorry about getting interrupted there, but getting back to the topic on this RAM, uh, this RAM really, I could get into more nitty gritty about it, but uh, if I was to put it in a body sense to try to explain it to you, um, hard drive is like the heart. Your RAM would be like your blood going through your veins. That makes everything work. going to show this a little bit more and you can get RAM in any kind of color you can get it without a heat spreader it don't matter um, a lot of times these companies also like to include nice little perks like uh, in this case they actually give a little case badge and a little manual with their memory. So now we'll close this back up. 
and put this. Also, when you're talking about memory and SSDs, M.2s, anything that has to do with memory uh, in a computer, always avoid magnets. Magnets can cause big time problems to these devices. They can damage it or more so you can erase even data that's even on it. Now, again, we're talking about now the processor or in other terms the CPU. This again is the AMD Ryzen 5 2600X which in this case the X means for extreme edition and meaning that it gives higher clocks and will in this case it has a turbo mode that accelerates all the CPU's cores to a faster speed. So in this case, this processor, it has six cores, 12 threads, runs at 3.6 gigahertz, or in the speed of RAM, 3600 megahertz, and it has a boost clock that can go up to across all six cores on it of 4.2 gigahertz or 4200 megahertz. Now, in explaining, ugh, in explaining the processor a bit better, I'll put it, I can explain it to you this way. When you're looking for a processor, you basically want to have as many cores as possible and as many threads as possible. In this case, six cores, 12 threads. The only way I can try to put it to some of you people that might understand it better is think of this as a V6 engine in your car. Now, if you only had six cylinders, and one valve per cylinder you only had for horsepower and output of your engine would allow your car to go 120 miles per hour now in the case of something like this it has six pistons but it also has two valves and because of the two valves it has more horsepower so because of more, more valves and more horsepower and performance, this ends up, this or your engine would then be going able to go up to 200 miles per hour instead of the single valve six cylinder engine that only allowed you to go up to 120 miles per hour. And that's basically how it works with processors. It's, it's along those lines. Now, uh, quickly, people out there um, are going to say, well, Intel's a better processor. Um, yes, Intel does have a better processor for single workloads, but AMD has actually had a better performing processor for multi-workloads uh, ever since the days of the original Athlon 64 which goes back to the early 2000s meaning you can have more than one thing running on the screen and it doesn't take away from the performance of the processor Intel in, in that case they have more single operating uh, processing power so if you had only one thing running on your computer total like one app like a browser it would do that great, but as soon as you start running a browser, listening to music, watching a video, playing a video game, and so forth and so forth, that's where the Intel processors have, have lost to the AMD processors. And again, that's where having multiple cores and multiple threads benefits you more. 
because you won't notice a slowdown on your system resources from being able to do all these things or as a lot of us know multitasking so when people say AMD is garbage no AMD isn't garbage um, as it is right now AMD is actually on the rise um, from say like the last four or five years uh, even this processor is kind of an example of how AMD had gotten behind the times because they got a new president a new strategy and they built these processors designed them specifically to compete with Intel and these processors have actually brought AMD back into the game because of not only their performance their price so while it doesn't have the strongest performance on a single individual thing uh, which is a which a big thing as a lot of people know is gaming right now gaming most people are gamers so playing video games like um, Quake and Doom and Tomb Raider and heck even games out there that actually are in the guitar community like Rocksmith so anyways <laughs> going back to what I was saying about these processors don't look at these as being bad because the reality is is it's only 10% of performance 10% of performance is yay when you look at the bigger factor of the day these processors are cheaper they give you more performance in multimedia or multitasking tasks on the computer and when you do things like video editing, uh, sound editing, and so forth, you get a, also a bigger advantage of that at a lower cost. Without AMD, Intel becomes a monopoly. And without AMD and people supporting AMD, Intel's monopoly grows, they don't innovate, and you end up with old technology so like if AMD didn't go uh, didn't exist anymore Intel Intel would be the only producer of processors for PCs and in that regard we could be talking about processors probably even five generations ago from Intel would actually be uh, new and current technology now today so it's very important that uh, companies innovate to uh, push each other and to keep competition fair and the market great for us the consumer and ultimately uh, AMD makes a consumer friendly and pro-consumer product compared to Intel as much as Intel has told people for years they're the best they're the best but they actually haven't innovated for like the last 10 years they actually had to take people away from AMD to help them now design new chips because they're that behind in their processor technologies design uh, that said enough of my talking Let's open the box here and I will show you basically the processor. And in this case, to mention, when you buy a processor, sometimes they do not come with the heat sink and fan. Some will do. In this case, it does. So in this instance we have the processor a manual a case sticker and that myself is the computer processor 
And it goes on the motherboard. That is the little pins that go down into the socket. And this chip is made on AMD's current processor technology, which is at 12 nanometer. That is the amount of microns and, and pins that they can get into a little square space. Uh, AMD in 2019 for this platform will be going to 7 nanometer. Intel themselves is stuck at the old larger 10 nanometer process. So that's basically everything that's in this box. AMD is also very um, trendy in, you know, being biodegradable, good to the environment. So in this case, like I said, this processor comes with a cooler in the box. And uh, always make sure to find out if you have a processor that has a cooler or not and always research and find your compatible cooler for your processor. This comes with a stock air cooler. You can also go out and buy custom water cooling loops or something that is called a all-in-one or AIO cooler which is a radiator with two hoses that go to a little block that fits on top of your processor and it runs water through the loop and cools it that way. So, in this case, let me just try to slowly pull this um, this cooler out. So, as we can see here, a bunch of nice fins. This is thermal compound to keep your to keep your processors heat coming up away from the top of it and being cooled by the fins and the fan on the front. Now in this case thermal paste be careful not to touch. It is a big pain in the derriere to get off your hands and also can ruin your contact with the CPU and would not allow the heat to pop properly come from it. Let me just put this back together here quickly. but not least your motherboard again your motherboard usually comes with some type of instructions on how to put the memory in it again as I mentioned that's to hold the M.2 slot you get some additional usually one or two sometimes depending on the tier of your motherboard level you'll get two basic cables or you'll get two nicer cables um, depending on the tier of motherboard uh, again manual another manual there another thick manual with a driver disc and so forth And what do you know, you get a, in this case, you get a little postcard. Fatality postcard, that's interesting, a little unusual, but cool at the same time. So we get those items. Another little thing. This is also very important. Do not lose these. When you change out your motherboards, this is the back plate that goes inside your case where all your connectors go. 
your USB ports and so forth and so forth and uh, yeah it's very important it also nicely has things labeled on the back um, if I can try to, like it says there the far end here USB um, audio ports networking and so forth and so forth jargon that some of you might understand other people might not so sorry I'm just trying to do a kind of you know basic thing here so let me get the motherboard back out and try to explain things better let me again ground myself on the middle of the mic So, this size is a ATX form factor size, which is considered a full size. The motherboards can be longer or shorter. Again, depends on the technology, depends on very, various many things. So in the case of this motherboard, we have USB ports up top, a PS2 port, which is what um, keyboards and mouse, mice used to connect to. This is a VGA port for to go out to your monitor if you put a processor with graphics on board such as the AMD G2200 or G2400 chip. Again, these are two additional things. So anyways, again, interrupted by the person upstairs. Uh, this is USB 3.0 standard USB ports. You have an A type and a C type here. Over on this side you have two regular USB 3.0s and you have two more here and for the three holes here this is actually where you plug in your onboard sound. Now in this case this is a ASRock B450 Gaming 4 motherboard based um, based off the AMD B450 chipset which is a mainstream chipset which gives a user mainstream performance. These heat sinks here are actually meant to cool off VRMs the little power management things that you can kind of see there on my finger here. You can see them there. So it's meant to keep that all cool. So if you're overclocking or if the processor gets a, bun a bunch of energy to it. Now, again, these are serial ATA ports. In this case, this board has four that run off of the chipset that's on the motherboard. And you plug in your, like your SSD and your DVD, CD player kind of things, peripherals into this. Uh, larger heat sink to keep things cool. These are your individual connector slots for your jumpers for to start your computer that you hook up to your case. This up here again is your socket, which is the AMD AM4 socket, which again, as I said, is supported until 2020. 
So AMD is committed to providing processors that will fit into the socket and this board being supported for those processors. So again, it's another big advantage of buying AMD for a computer system because they have long-term support for the end user. Now again, the M.2 drives, in the case of this motherboard, there's two. Up here along my finger, you can see the little uh, mount hold thing. You actually plug the little M.2 drive into the little Ultra 2 thing there. You push it in, push it down, screw it into place, and then that's installed. This board also comes with a second one down here, as you can see. Uh, again, we have this is where you put your graphics card that outputs to your monitors. This is a peripheral slot, which is called a PCI Express one time slot. The graphics cards are usually PCI Express 16 times slot, meaning 16 times speed or band width or path to the processor itself. Again, this board has three more small ones and a secondary one that is wired only for four times that you could put another video card in and have both video cards running at once. So, with all that said and done, that is going to be my, hopefully, educational, yeah, educational and understandable discussing about PC hardware and PC hardware for your own YouTube experiences. If you're able to put together, if you're able to read instructions and put together even stuff from like IKEA, you can put together your own computer. Um, there is numerous videos out there on the internet that actually talk about these things and show you how to do these things. The, uh, as I said, this cost me, for these components themselves, a uh, thousand Canadian taxes and shipping in. You folks in America have better pricing for components. You can get this basically for, I think, probably even around $800. US because of your better pricing. The just remember you want a nice big case that will fit the motherboard. A power supply again you want a quality power supply. Uh, usually you want to go with a brand like Corsair or Seasonic. You want probably between a 650 watt an 800 watt power supply um, don't let people tell you that you need to buy a cheaper power supply the power supply in your computer is the most important thing if you're going to spend the most money on something in your computer your power supply should be right up there number one everything else that connects to it is can be made cheaper like for example that motherboard they can go for about 130 US uh, whereas other motherboards that are higher tiered uh, using a higher tier chipset you can look at upwards of $400 but you're talking about more ports uh, more added features, more overclockability, and so forth and so forth. 
So, enough of my rambling. Uh, again, thank you all for watching this, and uh, hopefully in the next day or two, I will be back up running all this stuff and uh, have a video for you uh, showing the performance difference between the two systems. So, uh, with that said, have a good one, folks, and I will catch you later. Bye for now.